interview with prison there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 91714. <laughs> at uh, eight minutes past one. <laughs> So, uh, Ron Fahey, um, Green Island Club patron since 2008, if I'm not mistaken. It's on the board there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I don't is it back? Yeah, 2008. Is it back that far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was it right? See it? So, if you could tell us your full name, please, Ron. Ronald Thomas Fahey. And uh, date of birth? 19th of June, 1933. 33. Yeah. So, uh, I believe you just celebrated your birthday. Uh, 86, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Ron, um, just interested to know, uh, when did you first come to Green Island Rugby Club? 1966. And what brought you here? Well, uh, I got married in 1960, and I built a house in, uh, in Green Island. I lived in Roslyn all my life. And, uh, yeah, I come down here in 1960, and then Jerry Byrne, who was the president in that time, uh, he asked me if I would be interested in coaching, so I joined in 1966. Wow, it's a long time ago. It is. You, you, uh, 53 years. 53 years. You, you, your, your first experiences coming into the club rooms, I mean, would have been a very different club in those days. Oh, certainly. Were they a welcoming bunch? Yeah, just like they are now. Yeah? Hasn't changed. Club rooms have got a bit bigger? Oh, yeah, that's for sure. So you've, you've, you've been through many eras. Um, we've got some photos on the wall behind you of um, Bill Ald and um, uh, Bert Harvey people like that. If you think back, who are the people that stand up for you in the club um, in its history, um, pioneers, ambassadors for the club? Yeah, well, you mentioned two of them there. There was Neville Pringle. Neville was a, a stalwart of the club. There was uh, uh, Bill Dow, oh, Davy Dow, his brother, uh, Ray McFeelan. Uh, we used to sit in this corner here where this is, the offices, where you had a, a corner there called the oldies corner, corner and uh, you know, some of the guys wouldn't go in there because they wouldn't sit in the oldish corner. <laughs> Didn't want to. I bet there'd be some tales from that corner. Oh, was it what? Yeah, yeah. But that, all those guys are gone, unfortunately. A whole lot of them. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, we had some great times. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's why I think it's important to capture, um, you know, some stories from you from, from yesteryear. Yeah. So, so your family, um, tell us a bit about your family. Uh, uh, in what way? Uh, you, 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 your children? Oh yeah, I've got four children. I've got uh, two boys and two girls. One girl in Christchurch and the rest of the family are local. Uh, Alan, my oldest boy, he, uh, he uh, didn't like rugby very much. Schoolboy rugby put him off. <laughs> but Alan, the mother's son, he played here. Oh, God, uh, memory's starting to go a bit. <laughs> but, oh, he's been here. He coached all the uh, schoolboy teams for years and years here. Brought them right through from under sixes. Finished up coaching under 20 for many years with John Finney and all those. And uh, yes, he played for Green Island, played under 20. That's it. Uh, he gave it up a wee bit early, I thought, but however, he came to the coaching side of it and he's uh, a good boy. Got a lot of time for both, all my family, to be honest. And your other son? Alan, no, he never, he's, uh, he's in the general tyres outfit. He's uh, always been in the tie game all his life. Yeah. Good fella, they're all good. And, and, and your, your daughters, did they get into sport? No, uh, but a netball. Netball, Both of yeah. them played a bit of netball, that's all. Yeah. So Paul, um, Paul's uh, son um, start, started his career out of Green Island. Um, when he was five. Five, yeah. Six. Sorry, six they started then. And then um, couldn't quite crack the Premier team out here in uh, Green Island in 2016 and now he plays for Dunedin. He's doing very well there too, in their Premier team. Yeah, he's been out for, he's back today I think. Unfortunately, he's back, and uh, the funny part about it was when I played my rugby before I came to Green Island, I played for Dunedin. Yeah. Strange, isn't it? It's a strong family connection. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, this is my club. Yeah, this is your heart. Yeah. Makes it tough on a Saturday, you've got to decide whether you go watch your, uh, yeah, your grand, grandson or your uh, you, you, the club you love. Hasn't been easy. No, no. But I managed to fit one or two games, and he understands anyway. Yeah. So uh, t tell me a little bit about how you came to be patron. What's the process? Because it doesn't happen very often. If you look at our board, there aren't many patrons. So back in the day, wh who approached you? Did you have any inkling you'd become the club patron? Uh, no, never. Never. No, it was decided a meeting. Uh, what the guy's name? Hang on, I'll think about it shortly. But anyway, it was one of the meetings they had here, and they must have, when Lindsay Moore died, of course, you've got to get another patron, I suppose, and uh, my name came up. And uh, they asked me, and I said, well, I, 
big shoes to fill after Lindsay Moyle. I said, well, I'll give it a go. I found it a wee bit strange for a while, but slowly worked into the job and, uh, you know, I know you've got to give a, well, you speak to every now and again, so I try and do my best. You do a fantastic job. But, but I'm actually loving it. So did they give you any reasoning on why they selected you as patron, Ron? No. They, no, just, they just no. asked you to do the role? Yeah. Did they give you a job description? No, patron. <laughs> <laughs> so you just followed the mantle of what you'd seen done before? Yeah, well, Lindsay used to get up there... Uh, on a Saturday night, and he used to waffle away because there's always at that time of the day it was going pretty well, you know. So well, I thought, oh, I haven't got to do much, so I thought that, that'll do me. I, I, I think the club um, d- doesn't spend nearly as much on whiskey uh, since, no. since Lin- Lindsay, uh, Lindsay's time. No, the new time I saw him asleep in the corner. <laughs> Those were different days, weren't they? Yeah. So, um, for you, what, what you know, you've 53 years, you, I think you said it's been at, at Green Island. Yeah. In that time, what do you think is the quintessential Green Islander? You know, the, in terms of Green Island Rugby Club, when you think of a, a good Green Islander, what, what sort of character traits springs to mind for you? A good Green Islander, uh, well, a good Green Islander to me is, is the boys that have been so loyal to the club over the years. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, they were terrific in those days. Of course, nowadays things have changed that way, not they? They'll never be back to what they were, but they used to be all local guys and, and they were great guys and the committees were excellent, you know, very good, very good. T- talking about um, um, the old days and, um, you know, we, the club went through a bit of a tough time for some years and credit to you, you stayed loyal, uh, you know, down here and we had some uh, cricket scores against us. Um, I, I know you've been very, very pleased with the resurgence of the performance not just of our Premier team, but all of our sides competing so much better uh, on the field now these days. Oh, terrific. It is, you know, because we've gone, I've gone for years, you know, here with all the club, isn't that? We've just stuck with the club. We were out of rugby for uh, Premier Monday for two years, wasn't it? Yes. And uh, we had, I think we had a Prem 2 side, perhaps a, a third grade or a senior side, and it might have been a Colts, but we used to come down every Saturday, didn't matter. We'd come down here just as things had been, and we'd all gather in this corner and hopefully we thought, well, we've got to get back up there. And uh, Ray Byrne actually, his photo was on the wall with that jug. He's gone past now. He actually got on to uh, Martin, Steve Martin and he asked Steve if he'd come out and coach. And he came out with, uh, is it Ken Hodge? And Steve Martin from the, there at the varsity they were, they come out and started us up again. And we've got to thank those two guys, really, for getting us back in. Yeah, It absolutely. was hard work, and it's been hard work ever since. Yeah, we've seen clubs that don't have a, a Premier team, it's, um, that they can struggle to, yes. to uh, stick it out. Yeah, but, uh, oh, it started to build, and, you know, things come along quietly, and, you know, we, we've struggled, but, you know, they're, they're so loyal, the supporters have been so loyal in this club, being a, you know, not a country club, but you know what I mean? Yeah. They all stick together, and... Uh, you know, it's uh, it's come right. But uh, I've seen the days when we did, as you say, we got beaten by awful scores. I'll never forget that day. <laughs> and, um, you know, rugby clubs are so much more than what goes on the field. Rugby, you know, itself is obviously why we're here, but um, rugby clubs, um, with them comes a, ho- a lot of camaraderie. We have a brotherhood here at Green Island. Um, and off the field, we have a lot of fun. Um, you know, and that's we're not referring to, 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 to drinking alcohol. You know, boys like to have a drink now and again, but the boys here have a really good time, and um, it's great to see you, you. You're often here in the evening, enjoying and, and watching that. Um, for for you, um, looking at the club right now, how do you how do you see the health of, of the club? Of the field? club at the moment, I can see it's better than I've in the 53 years I've been here. Uh, we did have a good period in the 70s. We won two. Uh, three championships in the 70s, but, uh, and that was good then, you know, looking back then it was excellent, but since then it's been all sort of downhill, but, you know, it's, at the moment this club is just committee-wise and all round, they're, they're doing a terrific job, and uh, coaches, uh, Dean and V are doing a marvellous job this year, and they've got the crowd, the boys going excellent. Club rooms are looking fantastic, you know, we've a thorough paint job throughout, new heat pump systems, uh, the bathrooms are going to be upgraded soon. Yep. Great to see the uh, the off-field facilities looking so good. Oh, it is, yeah. I've done a bit of work here. I mean, uh, 
We punted this inside of this club uh, rooms way back. Ray McFeelan, who is gone now, and uh, Tom Dobson and myself. We punted this whole club rooms, and it hasn't been painted since, and it's still looking good until until last year. Last year, was red, it? red, red. Our yeah. our, uh, our president, Red, um, gave it a good coat of paint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and we've those guys. Uh, we've all done the fences two or three times, and just to spruce it up. Ron, very, I'm very proud to be in the club. Oh, it's a great club to be part of. Yep. And we're very proud of you, Ron. Um, you, you, you're a fantastic patron and ambassador for the club. You know, from our perspective, we see that the the patron is somebody who absolutely loves the, the, the club, flies the flag, no matter what, the head's always up. Um, you know, no matter which way the result goes, it's it's um, it's always flying the flag. And you're certainly that man. And oh, you know, you, you you won't be around forever. No, um, no. That's for sure. Maybe just another twenty years or so. Oh. Um, and, and and you really have set the path, set the benchmark for uh, for the next club patron. And um, that's why I think it's so important to capture this this video with you. Have you got any advice for the next patron? I hope he drinks beer. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be out of it if he doesn't. <laughs> now, um, it was just a thing you got to just, you know, it's good to get, you know, close to all these guys. You know, it's good to go into the club rooms, all the clubs around the town after a game. I think the patrons should show up there and, uh, you know, meet a lot of people. I know a lot of people that, when I go into clubs now and I enjoy that. You know, win or lose, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. I tell you, years ago we used to get beaten quite often and we'd all come into the club rooms and we'd sit down here at the table and if we got a result of about 10-6 or 11-3 we thought we had a win. That's how hard it was in those days. Now just going back in the history because if I'm not mistaken you would have arrived um, a few years before we made it for the first time to senior grade or was it just after we made it to senior grade? No they were in yeah, 66 just after. they were in senior grade oh, then. Of course 1960 was our first year in the senior yes, grade. Yes yeah. And um, can you talk us through what it was like going through the Abbotsford slip? Because obviously that would have had a major effect on the club, you know, completely rearranged our playing fields. It, Do you remember it, much about that, that, that not period? Not a lot, not a lot. I can remember the night it happened because my son was happening to be down this way and he came home and he said, oh, the Abbotsford slip's gone. But, uh, oh, would, you know, to see what was, what was happened, it was just unbelievable. Yeah. But, you know, uh, everything came right. We done, actually, we done very well out of the... Uh, Abbotsford slip because we got four grounds. Yeah, two went from two top. to four. So it was ours, we are over there. You know, it's good. But it wasn't good in a lot of ways. The slip was a, not good for a lot of people. Well, the one disappointing thing is we lost our view of the um, the number one ground, which is now the number two ground. That's right. It's no longer uh, ground level. They've uh, they've built it up. So yeah. Unfortunately, on those cold days, you just have to brave it out there on the oh, sideline. Well, you do that sort of thing. You do that. <laughs> I'm used to that. I haven't missed many games over all those years, you know, but... Uh, I just can't help it. I'm just rugby mad and, and love this club and I love being patron. I'm proud to be the patron of the club. I always have been and as long as I live I will be. Going back um, um, in history, the Kaka stream, we have some stories about uh, refs being thrown in the stream and uh, one or two bumps you see on uh, Miller Park 2, which was Miller Park 1, are the, the, the bodies of dead refs. Um, do you remember any of this uh, carry on yourself, well, Ron, or is that folklore? I, I remember it very well, actually, because I ended up in the creek three or four times myself. Because <laughs> they used to, at the last practice of the season, they used to try and throw the coach in the creek. So, I tried to resist, but I just couldn't sometimes. <laughs> is that something we should bring back? Should we uh, throw Dean Moyu and Eric in there? Definitely. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> our bag's not out and throwing V. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was, it, you know, it was great, you know. The, the, the young guys are great to coach in those days. They really were. Yeah. Terrific. Just looking behind you, that trophy cabinet's looking pretty full. Um, That's great. We, we, we've, we've, we didn't get the big one we wanted this year. We didn't get the Bazette. No. So close. No. Um, but, um, we'll get it next year. There's a lot of, yeah, next year. There's, there's a lot of uh, silverware in that cabinet. And, oh, yeah, um, yeah. Goes back a long way, some of those. Yeah, a lot of heritage. Oh, yes, yes. But we, 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 <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> we've had a good year this year and we've put three or four trophies in there and I think next year we might put one or two more, Dave. Yeah. We, <coughs> 1973, 74, 78, do you remember much about the banner wins? What that what that feeling was like oh, at the club? Oh, great. Yeah, it was, you know. Excellent. Uh, Jack McLaughlin was our coach and uh, he was an excellent coach. Very good. He used to... He was dedicated. What, dedicated. Were, the, what were the club rooms like afterwards in here? Ch oh, Chock-a-block? Chock-a-block, yeah. Yeah, chock-a-block. It was it was marvellous. Yeah, 
it's just a pity, you know. Well, we'll get back there, I'm sure. Uh, it mightn't be in my day, but I'm sure that we know we'll win a banner within two or three years. Yeah. Well, you'll, uh, you'll have to make sure you're here, Ron, I'll be, doing that speech. If I'm not, I'll be in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly will. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us, uh, Ron. Pleasure, Faye. Any, any last words um, you'd like to say to the people of Green Island? Oh, I'd just like to say the people of Green Island, you know, for their support and everything, it's been much appreciate, appreciated by the club. And uh, keep it up. And I'm sure that uh, you're going to be rewarded very shortly with uh, something, that, you know, extra. Thank you very much, Ron. Thank you, Dave.